Yo, what's up people? Hope you're well. Today we're going to be looking at documentary style editing techniques. More specifically, stuff you'd see in Netflix documentaries, as well as a little extra source towards the end of the video, so stay tuned. Also, apologies for the long gaps between uploads. I've been incredibly busy with client work. And thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. I did not think I'd be saying that so soon. And it may not seem like much, but to me, it's a lot, and I'm excited to see where this community will go. To say thank you, the project file for this tutorial will be free on my Patreon. This includes the title card animations, as well as all the assets and animations I make in this video. And finally, if you want free editing assets and to join a community full of like-minded editors, check out my Discord server. Everything will be linked in the pinned comment. Okay, hopping into After Effects, as always, we're going to create a new project. We're just going to name this Footage Homogenization. Uh, 10 seconds and make it 1920 by 1080. You're probably wondering what footage homogenization is. So, for example, when you watch a documentary, you're going to have many different ages of footages. Some's going to be HD and some's going to be 480p, for example. So what we're going to do is the best way to fix this and make it consistent is to digitally like match them. You, you can do it just by adding overlays and certain effects. And it's a really powerful tool to draw the viewer in and make them feel like they're actually, you know, part of, the, part of the documentary. As always, first things first, drag your footage onto the timeline, put your assets into the asset folder, mute your clips, and then rename them. This is, these are just two clips that I got off the internet. One's real footage of Pablo Escobar and then one's of the series Narcos. So we are going to start with the Pablo Escobar footage, uh, drag to where we want. Let's say over here, cut it up to however long you want it. Take the Narcos footage. Also go to where you want, cut it, and then boom. I'm going to scale up the footage by pressing S on our keyboard and then dragging this up to about 176. Then same with this footage. Just drag it up. Sweet. All right, sweet. Okay, so coming over to the effects and presets panel, we are going to type the effect Gaussian Blur and drag it onto the footage that is of a higher quality. And then we're going to make it five and then click repeat edge pixels. And then after that, we're gonna add the effect sharpen. So it's this one here. And we're gonna make it anywhere from 200 to 300. So I think 200 may be good. We'll try 250. Let me have some nice middle ground. Uh, actually 200. So you can see it's sort of like emulating that VHS look by blurring it and then sharpening it again. So you, yeah, you just you just have these like slight like artifacts, which is just another word for damages in footage. Next, create an adjustment layer by pressing Control, Alt and Y. And then we're going to rename it FX. Then we're gonna search up the effect Venetian blinds. Drag it on. We're gonna make it 10% and then the direction 90 and then the width 10 as well. Then after that, we are going to type up the effect CC Lens. We're going to take it and we're going to make it 500 in size and then Convergence 50. And then as you can see, this just like warps the edges. And now we're going to search up the effect Chromatic Aberration. And there's a free plugin called Quick Chromatic Aberration. I'll put it in the link in the description, but it's a really powerful tool and is way better than the stock Chromatic Aberration. So we are just going to drag this here and then we're going to make the position 1.5 and then that's it and then you can look as you know rgb I, I don't know what else to what else to say and then next we're going to add a really subtle flicker because when you look at like a tv screen there is actually a subtle flicker no matter how hard it is to see so we're going to type up the effect brightness and contrast we're going to drag it on and then we're going to hold alt on our keyboard and click the stopwatch on brightness and then what we're going to type up is wiggle 222, 5. And then now if we look really slightly, we should be able to see there is a really subtle flicker. And finally, as always, we're going to create a new adjustment layer, Control, Alt, and Y. Then we're going to name this one FBS. And we're going to add posterize time. We're going to make it 15. The last thing I want to mention is the scan lines can make the footage look kind of dark. 
So if you want to brighten it, you can add curves and just throw it onto the effects layer and then just pull it upwards like that. And then it has like a quite, quite a noticeable difference. And I usually do this because as I said, the scan lines can make the footage dark. Who doesn't love a good overlay? Netflix documentaries frequently use film burns and grain. Well, to be, to be honest, everyone uses film burns and grain. I think they're a really easy way to make transitions just like look so much better. They're also just a great way to hide cuts. So I've got two images here dragged in. One's just a newspaper, and then the other is just an ID. Just gonna make a cut here, cut it, and then move that over. And then we're just going to scale this up to how you want it. Okay. Okay, so I've dragged in, I've just dragged in two overlays. You can find them on my Patreon. They will be free for you to download, so there's no issue, you can have them. And I'm just going to rename the top one, Film Burn, and then this one, Grain. I'm gonna turn the Grain one off for now, and then drag them into the Assets folder. So what I'm gonna do for the start of the clip is come to the part where it starts at the brightest. So that should be, should be here. I'm gonna change the blend mode to add. Oh, I don't think that's the brightest actually. Okay, so here would be the brightest. So what I'm gonna do is just scale up really huge and then just drag it along so it covers the whole screen. Okay, so it's like that. Sweet. So now I'm just gonna right click the layer with the, the now I'm just gonna right click the film burn layer, go to time and then time stretch. And then to, to increase the duration, I'm going to change the stretch factor from 100 to 120. So it goes from 50 milliseconds to now one second. So stretch factor 120, nice. Then the next thing we are going to do is now increase uh, we'll make sure it's in the right place and now get type the effect curves and we are going to increase the brightness by just dragging this up slightly maybe a little bit more so it's like that okay so you're increasing the brightness because you want it to be a pattern interruption so it keeps people watching and then after this we are going to go to the grain now for the grain i'm going to zoom it in and then I want the part where it's just this green, the green fuzzy stuff here. So I'm going to drag it along, make sure to hide that, drag it along. So here would be good. And then I'm going to change it to screen. And then what I'm going to do is type up the effect CC toner. This is just a color uh, change effect. And I'm going to get to the mid tones and just change it to a nice orange color. So now you look here after the film burn, it has a really nice grungy texture. Okay, now in, bet in between the two clips, there's a very harsh cut. So what I'm gonna do is just cut the film burn and then move it over, but then make sure the time stretch is back at 100. So I'm going to come find the brightest part of the overlay for when the cut is right here. So now let's have a look. I'm also just going to move the position of it so it has a like a different uh, different like look. So I'm also just going to flip it horizontally and then move it over a lot. Just wondering where the overlay is. So sweet right here. So now it looks different and it also covers the cut. Sweet. Now, last thing I always do for these image animations is I'm going to right click, click new, and just make a null object, drag it above our images, and then just highlight both of them, come to this little pick whip curl, and drag it onto the null to parent it. Then I'm going to press S on the null and animate the scale from 100 to 110. And then I'm going to right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then for things like this, I like to have like a mountain peak sort of graph. So I'm gonna highlight this point, drag it in ever so slightly and then drag it in the same amount here. So then it looks like this. Sweet. Image sequences, I, I can't sing their praises enough. They are so useful and so incredibly easy. 
I can't remember a time that I haven't used it in a piece of client work and they haven't enjoyed it. So they're just a really easy and effective way to make an edit look that much better. So I've got a bunch of images here of just roughly to do with Pablo Escobar and his whole like, you know, lifespan, I guess. I don't know. So I've roughly put them in an order that I want and I'm just going to make them about anywhere from five to eight frames long. So let's have them five frames here. I'm going to click at the bottom and then holding shift, I'm going to click the top layer to select them all. And we're going to control shift D to cut them and then control X to delete them. And then what we're going to do is do the same thing, select them all from the bottom, right click, and then we're going to go to keyframe assistant, and then we're going to sequence layers, and then this will put them all in a sequence, right? We're going to stretch out the last one a little more. We'll have a go for about three seconds. Okay, now we're going to scale up and move all of these images to where you want them. After scaling up and positioning all of our layers, we are left with this. This is now a really simple way to make it look so much better. So first off, we're going to right click new, null object, and then we're gonna highlight all of our layers and then parent them to the null object coming to this pick whip, drag them on, press S on our keyboard, animate the scale from 100 to again, 110. And we're going to right click Keyframe Assistant, easy ease. And then we are going to make it peak, like go really fast when it comes to this last image here. So we're going to put our, our keyframe playhead on, on that point, and then we're going to graph edit it. And we are just going to pull it, pull the graph points so they are peaking on that point. Should be about here little bit less and then we are left with this sweet okay and then next we are going to control alt and y to create an adjustment layer it's going to rename this one fx and the first effect we are going to add is transform drag it on then we're going to make the scale a hundred and hundred point five then we're going to come to this position keyframe we're going to hold alt and click and then type posterize time three then wiggle two 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 comma one and then this will just be a camera shake a really subtle camera shake then the next thing we are going to add is again chromatic aberration the quick chromatic aberration Let's drag it on and then we are just going to make this one because less is more for this and then the last the last effect we are going to add is noise. We're going to come to the default noise and we are going to make it 10% and then take the use color noise off. After this, we are going to create another uh, adjustment layer. We're going to name this one edge blur. We are going to come up to this little mask tool or the shape tool, hold click and select the ellipse tool. And then we're just going to double click it to create a mask and then click invert. Then add some feather. I usually do about 250. And then we're going to look up the effect Gaussian blur. And we're going to put it on, make it like 15, and repeat edge pixels. See, it's a subtle, subtle blur on the edge. We can you can always increase the feather as well if you want. So press M on our keyboard. Then open up the feather more. And then the last thing we're going to do is create another adjustment layer rename this to FBS, and then you can add posterize time if you want. Just make it 15, and then boom, this is what we are left with. Moving on to the source, this is just an extra thing that I see sometimes in Netflix documentaries, and you can also just add it to anything you want, and it's really simple and you basically have full control. I'll show you now. So you're gonna press Control and then Y to create a solid, and we're just gonna name this Speckles. Then we're gonna type up the effect Fractal Noise. Drag it on. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is create a contrast of 570, and then a brightness of minus 270. 
Now you're going to see you're going to be left with really subtle dots. I'm going to come to the transform tab and make the scale 20. And you can do even less if you want, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do 15 for now. But you can do whatever you want, obviously. And then we are going to come down to the evolution options tab. We're going to hold alt on our keyboard where it says random seed. And then we're going to type posturize time three and then enter. We're going to type random 1000. And then if we play this out, it'll look like this. And if you want to change the amount of uh, speckles there are, you can just change the contrast up and down how you like it or the brightness. Either one works. And the way you add it to images is by simply changing the blend mode to screen. And I'm just going to turn the opacity down to 5% so you can see. And then look. This is a really subtle way to add texture and make your edits look that much better. It's basically a final thing you do if you want. And I usually do it for my projects. So I highly recommend. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this video helpful, subscribing and liking helps me out a ton. And if you want to see any other tutorials, please comment them down below. And lastly, any of my socials or relevant links will be in the description below. And again, thank you for our 100 subscribers, and I'll see you next video. Goodbye.